Hey guys and dolls, welcome back to Danimal Sound. This is Danny Lee. And in this segment, I want to take a quick look at the function of Pro Tools Elastic Audio pertaining to editing acoustic guitars. And in this particular scenario, we have a band with whom I am friends, and the situation dictated that the singer slash guitarist had to track his parts first. So these are essentially final guitars, final vocal that was comped, and later we'll be dubbing drums and bass. So that adds a secondary reason why I'm using Elastic Audio to edit this, because it's definitely going to help the bassist and drummer fit more in the pocket as an overdub, in this case doing things a little backwards, when the guitar is pretty much dead on. I don't want to say dead on like computer precise, because you never really want to do that for musicality purposes, unless the person actually plays that way, which is fine. That is correct, you're seeing three separate uh, guitar tracks. And the three separate guitar tracks that you're seeing, it's a single source. I've got up here this AC GTR 202 and the 101, or I'm sorry, 102. These are mics. Uh, they're small diaphragm condensers that were pretty much put in an XY pattern on a single mic stand to get a more of a stereo spread. And below those, also highlighted, you see a DI, which was, I forget the name, but a DI box just for added flexibility later. The only thing that you want to watch out for when doing a multi-miked instrument like a guitar in this case is, even though the singer was seated performing, uh, sometimes they might get into a bit of a groove and they might want to move around a little bit between vocals, so you'll get a little bit of a proximity thing going on, like a, like a woo, woo, woo type of thing. That's an exaggeration, but you get the idea. You might hear that later on in the video between the tracks. One thing before we get started, you can go into grid view as I have right here. I have it set to 16th notes. I'm sorry, 8th notes in this case. So you can see the beats right along here. Lined up to the grid. Before Pro Tools 12.4 came out, I would basically have to record my click because I mean I can see the grid here with the downbeats and well and the upbeats in this case too with the with the eighth notes but I do typically like to do it visually and see the waveform. So in this case I'm just gonna come over here to this little button on my click track and I'm gonna hit freeze. And as you can see here it's rendered an audio waveform of the click track that's on the grid. Cool little feature they've added, thank you Avid. And the other thing I like about the, the track freeze feature actually is the fact that, like I said, it shows the waveform even though it's on an aux track, so that's, that's important to me. And without further ado, we're gonna get into the acoustic guitars. And as you see, I have them grouped, so everything I do here corresponds to each track regardless of where I do the edit. And as we back up, you can see he's pretty tight to the click. And with any performance like this, once in a while you're going to get you're going to get the uh, artist to stray a little bit. They might get a little bit excited and they'll start rushing just a tad. So that's where we come in to edit this while maintaining musicality, I might add. So, back out and take a look at the first few hits here. I don't believe we need to really touch anything there. If you wanted to, right off the bat, we can just make that first chime on the first chord there right on the grid just to kind of get a clean start. Don't know how the drummer and bassist will attack this, so. In that case, what makes this even easier is because once I put this in grid mode, just come over here and you see this accordion looking thing. That's not what I want to do, but you'll see it there. If you're on a Mac, you just hit your control key. That turns the cursor into this plus sign with the little fist thing, as I call it, Mario fist. That's going to add a warp marker here. And what you want to do is, when you start doing this, set what are called anchor points. And in this case, uh, let's move downwind here. This eighth note right here, this looks like it's pretty dead on the grid. 
So let's set a, a, uh, a warp marker there too. That's going to anchor. So everything in here is constrained by this marker and this marker. Because otherwise, if you don't do that, everything past this marker is going to shift too as a track as a whole. You don't want that. That can get you into a lot of trouble. Because everything down the line to the end of the song is going to shift if you move anything. So let's take a look at something like this. We'll start with this middle guy actually, just so I can show you some variations. This guy right here. And I found that with elastic audio, it's definitely preferable to do larger, larger passes of audio in, in chunks. So if you can get away with like, say even two to four bars where you just slide one thing to fix it all, that's, that's preferred. Just due to the way the uh, Avid Pro Tools, um, the algorithm that they have to manipulate this audio, how it functions. For instance, right here, let's take this off grid mode just so I can slide this freely. In slip mode, say I take this warp marker here. If I slide this this way, everything on this side of this warp marker gets compressed. Everything on this side of the marker between the anchor points is stretched. So you've got a lot of math going on there internally. So I, you know, I try not to do that either. But just be, just be mindful of that because you'll hear artifacts once in a while. Okay, so we've got this. We're going to go into grid view. We're just going to nudge this guy. onto that downbeat. And while we're at it, just for exaggeration, let's put all these on a downbeat. So we'll take this guy too. And we'll put this guy on a downbeat too. So luckily, we don't have any artifacts just yet, as far as you might get a warbling sound eventually in the elastic audio. As I said, it's an artifact of something's being stretched too far or compressed too much. You will hear it, especially on a track like this where I've got multi-sources. As I said before, I've got two guitar mics and a DI box happening, so and they're all recording the same thing. And this spot right here is a good time to stop again. Let's make an anchor point. That way, like I said, everything here, I can manipulate without affecting everything over here. So you just want to be mindful of that uh, with this real-time stretching. But it sure does beat the pants off of basically cutting and time stretching the actual audio and rendering it all. So now I've come this far, and you can see in this section here, sorry, my mouse is messing up a little bit. In this section here, we've, we're rushing just a bit against the, uh, the grid lines. And this is a good opportunity to show you if I just grab one of these. We already have the anchor point over here, so if I grab this, you'll see everything between those two points shift together. And it just snaps to the grid. And like I said previously, that would be logistically preferred to breaking it up into smaller and smaller sections because the less math the computer has to do, the better, the less chance of artifacts. So let's check out what we have here. Yep, and that's a good example. That's the artifact right there I wanted to tell you about. Right here, we have a bit of a warbling sound going on that I described earlier. Sometimes that happens because, as you see here, we only have the two analysis markers on the first two tracks, not on the DI. And what that does is, the computer's reading these analysis markers, so sometimes what it'll do is, that affects what's being shifted and what's not. So I'm going to undo what I just did here check this out and see if this helps. I've also got that happening over here. So I'm going to undo that other mark. As you see, it takes out the, that warbling sound. So what I might need to do 
is going to add a group analysis marker here to sync these up and another group analysis marker here to see if we can tidy that and remove that artifact. It can be tricky stuff. And sometimes what you have to do is even go through, move two parts on the outside and get rid of one that you shifted on the, in the middle. And as you heard, that got rid of this warbling in this part, so that's good. Let's back up over here and see if we can fix this. Alright, let's try stretching this part out. As you can see, the rhythm starts to change because of the way the analysis happened in the elastic properties. So this actually has to come down to this downbeat here. So that part seems okay. Just for giggles, let's just put this on this, right on this eighth note here, see if that has any uh, positive impact. Looks like we're good to go there. Let's back up. Eighth note on the dot there. like that's early. Okay, and as you noticed before when I did this, I had the warbling effect that I spoke of before too. It's sort of like a phasey thing that happens. In this case, it's going from the right side to the left side. So it's some kind of weird phasing manipulation issue between the mic that's panned to the right and going to the left. So in this case, we'll put this back to where we found it. Where we want it to be, rather. The effect might still be there just a tad, but it's not as noticeable, which is the key. And lest we not forget that this eventually will have drums and guitars on it, too. I mean, I'm sorry, drums and uh, bass. So this stuff will be a little less noticeable, we'll have some effects, yada yada. As you can see here, this is literally just flat, dry audio right off the mics. No compression, no EQ, no nothing. We'll go down here, make another uh, anchor spot. Uh, let's make two. This one's pretty close to where the uh, grid is, so we'll rely on that guy. And this is quite a distance here, so. It shouldn't be a problem to just nudge this to the downbeat. Sometimes this system will actually behave, and I won't have to hit control click, it'll just make a warp marker, as you just noticed. Okay, that was a spot where we just had some warp on. Let's see if we can fix that. Sometimes it's as simple as just putting that on there. That didn't fix the problem, so let's find out if we could do something else. If you hit Option, you can click on that and remove that marker. Occasionally, what you'll find is working in grid mode, you might want to switch to uh, might want to switch to slip mode on occasion. In this case, I'll make a new warp marker here, and moving something right on the grid will actually make the artifact. So sometimes stretching it a little farther or a little shorter to compress it will actually fix that issue. As you notice, right here, it's just a tad off 
the grid from where I had it before, but that seems to have fixed the problem. Here we only have the one analysis marker, so I'm going to add that to the group and see if that fixes the warble there. Okay, so something here is being stretched a little bit too much, so... Okay, that seems to have fixed that spot here, so we'll see if we cannot go through here, apply another marker, tuck this spot together. And we'll see if we can just put this back on this other right note. As you can hear there, normal warbles. Let me just uh, mute my click track so you can hear this by itself. Just got a little bit of an anomaly going on in here that I may have to try to figure out later, but you get the idea. Sometimes I may have to just turn off my group and see what's going on. Sometimes you may find that you have to move one, just one of the tracks slightly just to make it work. We'll see if it actually is this track doing it. Sometimes it's actually the DI track, you'd be surprised. Put them all back in. And that didn't fix it, so you never know. That's the trick with Elastic Audio is uh, it's, it's got its anomalies. Uh, it's great technology, but you definitely do have to find ways to work with it. And just like that, it seems like having that hard right guitar slid just a tad to the left, I'm talking like milliseconds, it seems to have tightened it slightly and gotten rid of that anomaly. Just to recap, let's go back to the beginning here. And as you probably heard that last note there on the downbeat will need to be edited later too. But there you have it. That's just the uh, first four, I'm sorry, uh, first couple bars here of this song edited to the click uh, for the guitar tracks. And just repeat the process going all the way down the line to the end of the song. Again, not everything is going to want to be dead on the, uh, on with the click or the grid. It just, it's basically an artistic taste and however the performance needs to feel ultimately. So.
there you have it. Visit my website at dannylee.co, D-A-N-N-Y-L-E-E dot C-O. And please email me any questions or any requests on the YouTube channel, on the website, or on Facebook. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Cheers.